Once again, thank you for joining us in our next level leadership class. So this week will focus on emotional intelligence. There are different intelligences that some of you have taken maybe some tests in the past in your life, like an IQ, intelligence quotient. This one, you cannot change it. That's what you are born with. And this is very important for us to notice because it's going to help you a lot. If you understand that you can't change your IQ. If you have high IQ, that's what you are born with. If you have low IQ, that's what you are born with. You cannot change it. And this helps you to understand concepts, to understand maths, understand science, understand biology, understand finance. You know, you understand things. You have high IQ. There are some people that takes them time to understand some of those things. That's why I'm saying it depends on uh, how you are wired, how you are born, and that's naturally who you are. There is social quotient, and we'll talk about this probably towards the end of the class, how you relate with other people, how you relate, and you can improve this, how you relate with your friends, how you relate with your family, how you relate with your colleagues. It's called social quotient. We have adversity quotient. Adversity quotient, it's how do you deal with adversity? How do you deal with difficult times? There are some people who can who, who have who have strong shock absorbers who can who can absorb and deal with difficult situations in in a very acceptable way there are some when when those challenging times come they just throw in the towel they just make noise scream shout and everybody will know about it we have financial intelligence how do you deal with finances how do you deal with money how do you relate with money and we usually have a class on financial management, personal financial management towards the end of the year. We usually have this kind of a class where you can register. And some of you have done uh, Dave Ramsey and other, uh, you know, other programs. But it, it, it's all about financial intelligence. How do you manage your finances? Let me say this. Most of you do not have income problem. You don't have salary problem. You have spending problems. You just have to learn how to spend in a smart way. Live within your means. Spend only what you have. And it makes your life less, you know, uh, difficult. And also, you don't have stress when it comes to finances. Then the last one is what you call emotional quotient or emotional intelligence. This one you can improve. You can change it. You can change it. So we are going to focus on this one today, emotional quotient. If you look at, let's say in your life, have you ever felt unseen? You know, you're doing so hard, you're doing so much, and but it's like nobody recognizes you. Or every time you speak, people misunderstand you. Maybe say something and they don't listen to you. And that can frustrate you. Because you don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. I have a question for you. And my question for you is, let, let's look at this situation where you have a particular person. I think most of us, we had those kind of situations. Where we have either managers, supervisors, school principals, uh, even pastors. He's a good manager, but it's very difficult. He's a good principal, but he does not understand. I need to uh, also come up with whatever, you know, statements that we can think of. She's a good supervisor, but so feel free to share your thoughts, but what? Anyone? You can turn your mic on. Somebody can be a good financial, maybe accountant, but what is that? But they have no patience. But they have what? No patience. No patience, yes. He, he is... He's a good financial manager, but he's impatient. And short-term cut. 
Yes, he's a good school principal, but he's short-tempered. Or he's a good manager, but he's short-tempered. Anyone else? Unapproachable. Yeah, he's a good pastor. And he preaches very well, but he's unapproachable. Any other but? <laughs> Sheila? Arrogant. Arrogant. Wow, I like that one. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> he's a great director, but he's very arrogant. <laughs> he lacks people skills. He lacks people skills. She's a good, she's a good uh, supervisor, but she lacks people skills. She, she can't relate well with people. You know, everybody avoids her. When she comes, everybody avoids, her. everybody runs away from her. Let me go to Azu. Azu, are you still there? Azwi? Azwi, are you there? I guess he's struggling with his mic. Billy, what's your thought? Billy? Oh, Dr. Manasi. Yes, I go ahead and share your... What is, what is the but that you can think of? It's like, I'm, I'm sorry, what did you just say? The but that you can think of. The boss that I can think of? The B-U-T, the but. Oh, the buts. Mm -hmm. but. But uh, um, he's not competent? Yes, he's a, I don't know, he's a manager, but he's not competent. And, and that can be very challenging. Have you ever worked with a manager who's not competent? Very difficult. Very, very difficult. Where you find that you are more knowledgeable than your manager. That can be a big challenge. Dr. Panassi, this is Joyce Winston. Uh -huh. I once had a manager that could not make decisions. Oh my God. Unable to, to make a decision. He's a good manager, but he's indecisive. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. That can be very tough because it delays everything. It delays everything. Dr. Sunshine, go ahead. Dr. Sunshine, I thought maybe you wanted to say something. Go ahead. Good evening, Dr. Manasi. Hello. Um, wow. He is a good manager, but, but he cannot, but he cannot control his temper. Yes, he's a good man. He doesn't have empathy. He does not have emotions. Mm -hmm. He doesn't feel for the other person. Wow. Actually, you have summarized the whole class for today. <laughs> 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 That's exactly what we'll focus on today. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. That is so true. Yeah. And that's around us to focus on today. Sometimes we, you can be a very good and, and that's where the difference between, remember I talked about IQ? The, the good manager part of it is the IQ part. The bad part of it is the EQ part, the emotional quotient part. Does that make sense? All those buts that we have mentioned is the emotional part. You, you can be good in maths, but when it comes to the emotional part, you, you will be failing. You can be a very good supervisor, you know your stuff, you know everything. But when it comes to the people relationship, the, the EQ part of it, you fail. And let me say this to all of you. Everything in life, all rises and falls with relationships. If you want to progress in life, you must learn how to relate with people. If you want to be successful in your career, you must learn to relate with people. And relationships, it's an area that most of us, we are not good at. We fail when it comes to relationships. We fail when it comes to relating with people. You can be a good team leader. You know your staff, you know the systems, you know everything in that company. But when it comes to relating with people, you fail. 
That's what you're going to focus on uh, today. That's what you're going to focus on today. Let me go back to uh, my screen. Our lives have different aspects. And it's very important for us to understand that our lives have the physical aspect, that's our flesh, our bodies. The social aspect, that's how we relate with people. Environmental aspect, how we relate with the environment. Emotional aspect, how we relate emotionally, connect with other people and even ourselves. The spiritual aspect, how we relate with God. Intellectual aspect, that's where how you relate with understanding facts, understanding concepts, understanding systems. We need to find a way to balance all these areas. Most of us, we are good in one aspect. Physically, we are fit. You walk every day or you run or you go to the gym. You're okay physically. But socially, you're not well. You can't relate well with people. Maybe you can relate well, you're good socially, but intellectually, you are lacking. That's why you need to start learning. You start, to read, you start reading, start registering with classes like this. So you, you increase your intellectual capacity. Most of us, we are not growing intellectually. You, you hate books. Actually, you, you are allergic to studying. You are allergic to books. Anybody who comes closer to me, I always encourage them to study because I know what it will do to their mental capacity and to, to their emotional growth. Some of us, we are good socially. We are good physically. We look great. We are healthy and all those kind of stuff. But spiritually, we are very, very poor. We need to find a way to grow in all these areas of our lives. And today, I want us to focus on this last one, the emotional part of it. That's what we'll focus on. And I want us to grow emotionally. Let's look at what is emotional intelligence. And I'll quickly go through this here. Emotional intelligence is the ability to identify and manage your own emotions. But beyond that, understand the emotions of other people. Somebody mentioned it. Said, he said, you are good with your job, but when it comes to the human part of it, you, you can't, people can't approach you. You don't, you don't, you don't empathize with people. There's a difference between sympathy and empathy. Do you empathize with people? I always give this example. You know, if you drive on the freeway and you, you find a, an accident, on the road, you find an accident on the road. What do you do? Some of us just say, oh, share, may God help them, may God bless them. Then you move on. That's sympathy. You are sympathizing with them. But if you are a nurse or you are a medical doctor, when you arrive in the scene, what do you do? Or maybe even policemen, you stop, you go and help the people who are in trouble. That is empathy. That is empathy. What I'm trying to say is sympathy and empathy is different. Sympathy, you feel for someone, but it ends up there. You say nice things. You say nice words, whether it's on Facebook or uh, WhatsApp or whatever. You say something nice. That's the end of it. When somebody says, I'm hungry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll pray, I'll pray for you. May God help you. You sympathize with them. But empathy, you go beyond just feeling for them. If you don't, if somebody does not have food, you can call two, three people and say, oh, Minister Warren, oh, uh, Sister Andrea, oh, Sister Shelley, Brother Billy, oh, there is Brother so-and-so, he does not have food. Can we do something about it? Then you collect some food and you give that person. That is empathy. That is empathy. So there's a difference between sympathy and empathy. And always I encourage people to be empathetic, not just sympathetic. Because sympathy, you just feel and it ends up there. You do nothing about it. You sympathize with the person. But empathy, it pushes you to do something about the situation. Do you understand the difference? There's a difference between empathy and sympathy. So we must, when it comes to emotional intelligence, we focus more on empathy and not sympathy. I'll quickly go through these scriptures. I will not have time to, to explain them because we don't have enough time. But just go with me. Just flow with me, please. Number one is Proverbs 29, verse 11. 29, verse 11. We talk about emotions here and how to control your emotions. Fools vent their anger. 
fools vent their anger, but the wise quietly hold it back. Hmm. Sometimes being quiet, it saves you a lot. Sometimes you don't have to give them the peace of your mind. At the end of the day, it may not even make a difference. Whether you speak loud, you shout, and you scream, or you hold it back, like the Bible says. You don't have to scream at your baby. You don't have to scream at your children. You don't have to shout or scream at your partner. Sometimes you just have to be quiet and allow God to work. Let's look at verse 20. It says, there is more hope for a fool than for someone who speaks without thinking. Talking about emotional intelligence here. You don't have to say everything that you think. Sometimes you just have to hold it back. Keep quiet. It will save you a lot later. It will save your relationship. It will save your, your dignity. An angry person starts fights. A hot-tempered person commits all kinds of sin. We have to learn to control our emotions. Pride ends in humiliation while humility brings on. When, when you are humble, when you don't have to you don't have to prove anything. Oh, they will know me. They will know me. I'm so and so. No, no. You don't have to show them. You don't have to tell them. They don't have to know you in a negative way. Oh, you can't do that to me. You can't. No, no, you don't have to do that. Just hold it, hold on. Pride ends in humiliation. While humility brings honor. Sometimes when you are quiet, people will honor you more than you are noisy and, and loud. Fearing people is a dangerous trap. Oh, what will people say? What do, they, they will think I'm a fool. They, they will think I'm not smart enough. What do people think about me? So you do things because you are afraid of people. You shout and scream because you are afraid of how people will think about you. What will they say about you? The Bible says fearing people is dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. Just leave everything in the hands of the Lord and God knows how to take care of them. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. You brood of snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? Like look at the final part. It says, For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. Proverbs 4.23 Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Proverbs 10.11 The words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. The words of the wicked conceal Violent intent. You don't have to be violent. You don't have to be violent in life. Psalm 14, 1, it says, Only fools say in their hearts, There is no God. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. Not one of them does good. Proverbs 21, verse 2. People may be right in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their hearts. So it's a heart issue. In most cases, emotions precede thoughts. Your emotions will overtake your thinking. When emotions run high, they change the way your brains function. I don't have time. I'll show you how it works. Literally, I'll show you how it works in your head. How the dendrons function when you're emotionally high. It affects how you think. It affects how you think. And in most cases, you know, our emotions affect our cognitive abilities, decision-making powers, interpersonal skills. When our emotions are high, in most cases, we don't listen. Let me repeat. When our emotions are high, in most cases, we don't listen. But if we can lower our emotions and we take time to listen, I'm telling you to make a big difference either in your life and in the lives of the other people that you work with. Because all of us, when we're emotionally charged, we are hearing, but you're not listening. It's very difficult to communicate sense to somebody who is emotionally charged. Somebody whose emotions are high. 
it's very, very difficult to communicate sense to them because they have convinced themselves that they are right and they don't even give you a chance to, to speak to them. Why, why do you have to learn and speak about emotional intelligence? Because most of us who have been to school, almost all of you here have been to school. Either you went to college, went to university, whatever level that you went to. But very few of us have taken classes on how to, com how to, how to control our emotions. And that is why most of us, we are good when it comes to IQ. We are good when it comes to finances. We are good when it comes to management. We are good when it comes to whatever you can think of. But when it comes to controlling our emotions, we are still challenged. Understanding and managing our emotions and the emotions of other people, it helps us to be more successful in both our personal and even our professional lives. You become more successful if you can be able to learn to manage your emotions. You relate better with people when you can control your emotions. Your emotional intelligence or understanding our emotions, it helps us a lot in different areas of our lives, especially in our careers. Having a high IQ, intellectual quotient, is an advantage. Understanding math, understanding science, understanding theology, and whatever you learn and study and you understand how things work, understanding the systems in your company, understanding the policies, everything in your organization, it's okay. But having EQ, being able to relate with people, can make all the difference to your life and also to your career. Some of you cannot progress in your career because you can't relate well with people. You have difficulty relating with people. When you relate well with people, you, you, can, you, can, you can communicate with people without hurting their feelings. You know how to say things. You know how to say things right. When you understand your emotions, you can manage your emotions even when you are under a stressful situation. When you are when you are overwhelmed. The other time I was with Pastor Eddie. I don't know if he's here. Pastor Eddie from Zambia. I saw his wife here. We who were in Zambia. I'll try to summarize it. I will not go through the whole story. But what happened is they changed the flight that we we're supposed to leave. Uh, I think let's say we we're supposed to leave at 10. I can't remember. We we're supposed to leave at 10. And Pastor Eddie drove us to the airport. When we arrived there at the airport, they said, oh, your flight, we changed the time. It has left at 7 a.m. And we we could find a way to handle the situation and we communicated until we found another flight. Then we took the other flight in the afternoon, around one or so. And Pastor Eddie said something which I always think about every time. <laughs> He said, the way you handled that situation, I admire you. I admire the way you handled that situation. If it was me or it was somebody else, we would have screamed, screamed at the, uh, the cashier or whoever was working at the desk or would have made a lot of noise. Everybody will know that they did us wrong. But you were so calm and you found a way to resolve the issue. I said, because the most important thing is I focus on resolving the issue. Trying to go back. Trying to go back and try to prove them that they are wrong. At the end of the day, it's not helping me you not know, travel. Actually, they may even delay me because what they were saying is, well, you have to sleep over, then you will uh, you'll leave tomorrow. And I could not leave the next day because the next day I was supposed to take another flight to, I think, to London or Switzerland, I can't remember. So there was no way I would have to slip over because the next day I was supposed to be in another place. What I'm saying is, if you can manage your emotions even during stressful time, it helps you and it helps other people that you work with. But the most important thing is if you can manage your emotions, it improves your relationships with the people that you care uh, about, the people that you work with, the people that you live with. You no know, good social skills are associated with high emotional intelligence or EQ, emotional quotient levels. People with high EQ, they have greater mental health. They, they perform much, much better in their jobs. They make more money. That's why it's very important. Remember I said, you can't change, you can't improve your IQ. 
but you can improve your EQ, which means if you can focus on improving your EQ, your emotional intelligence, the way you relate with people, you can make more money. You can become more emotionally stable. You don't have to scream. You don't have to shout. You don't have to make noise. You can more become more emotionally stable because you understand that any situation that you are in, it's temporal. Even your current situation, it's temporal. You, you can manage your emotions very, very well and handle it very, very well. You can build better and strong relationships and you can have greater leadership skills. You, you don't have to, how do I put it? You don't have to shout at people, scream at people. You know, try to display your emotions in a way that you scare people. Oh, is this you? We never thought you were like this. We never thought when you're angry, you behave like this. No, no, you don't have to do that. You know, you become less impulsive. You control your temper better. You cope more effectively with stress. You have self-confidence. You can set boundaries. And you can be more positive about yourself. People with high emotional intelligence, they, they're always positive when they speak. People with low emotional intelligence, no matter how smart they are, they're always negative. They always discourage you. They're always, they're always negative. They're always negative. People with high emotional intelligence, they do the opposite. They don't give up easily. People with low emotional intelligence, they always give up easily. With high emotional intelligence, you interact better with people. You build better relationships. You build strong, not only strong, underline the word lasting relationships. Most of you, you can't stay in the relationships for six months. Most of you, you can't stay in the re one relationship for a year. Because you, when it comes to relationships, you, you fail. You can't do very well. When you have high emotional intelligence, you stay longer in relationships. You, you learn how to relate with people. You maintain relationships. I'm not talking about any relationship, but healthy relationships, good relationships. You can identify a healthy relationship and you make a determination, I want to stay in this relationship. We will be friends forever. And there are some relationships that are toxic, that are not healthy, that are not good for you. Quit them, stop them. Stop them. Then when they bring stress, those relationships bring strength to you, I mean stress to you, leave them. You don't have to continue with them. When you have high EQ, you can identify positive people and you live with them. When you, you have high EQ, you have what you call emotional resilience. You can stay long. You don't just give up easily. At work, it also helps you to resolve conflicts much, much easier within your teams. You can relate much, much better. You can coach and motivate other people. You can create a culture of collaboration in your team. You work together. You're not competing because you're in one team. Whether it's in ministry, my ministry is not competing with Minister Warren's ministry. We collaborate. We work together. There are times when I need him and there are times that he needs me. We work together. He leads the men's fellowship. Sometimes if he's not available, you can ask me to lead. Or Elder Kelvin can lead. Or Bishop Tony can lead. Anybody can lead. Because we are not competing. We are collaborating. We work together. Minister uh, Winston, he helps you with the life groups. He leads great, a great, great uh, life group. One of the best life groups in Corona. Why? Because we are working together. We are collaborating together. He leads the marriage ministry. We work together. We collaborate. You can build psychological safety within teams. You make everybody feel safe in your team, whether it's at work, in the ministry, at home, in your business. Everybody must feel safe when they are with you. They must not feel threatened. They must not run away from you. They must run to you. When they go through stressful situations, when they go through difficult situations, they can run to you. People with low emotional intelligence, that's different. Often they feel misunderstood. Oh, you don't understand me. Every time when they speak, you don't understand me. Oh, you don't get me. You always misunderstand me. They easily get upset. Every time, you know, within a day, they get upset 40 times. Everybody has upsets them. They spend more time being upset than being happy. They become overwhelmed emotionally. 
They always have low self-esteem. They feel like they're not enough. They're not adequate. People with high EQ, they understand the link between their emotions and how they behave. They remain calm and composed during stressful situations. And as I'm speaking, I think it's starting to identify some people that you know. No matter what they go through, they just remain calm. You can't even tell that they are going through stressful situations. They are able to influence others towards a common goal. Towards a common goal. They can handle difficult people with a tech and diplomacy. In your team, if there are difficult people, they don't frustrate you. You know how to handle them because you have high emotional intelligence. Let's look at the components of emotional intelligence. What, 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 what compose is it? What is the uh, what is it that is in emotional intelligence? There are four or five things that we we'll quickly go through. Number one is self-awareness. We talked about this last week when we talked about the DISC assessment. The DISC assessment is part of self-awareness. It helps you understand yourself. You understand your emotions. You, you assess yourself accurately. You understand your confidence. You understand the way you behave. Why you behave the way you behave. The second one is how do you control? That's the second part. After understanding your emotions, how do you control your emotions? So we'll talk about self-control. People who understand themselves, who understand things that trigger their anger, things that trigger their emotions, they can control their environment much, much better than those who do not understand. So you must understand, and what is it that makes me angry? Why am I angry? Why do I get emotional about this person? Why do I get emotional when somebody calls me this? When somebody says this, why do I get emotional? It's very interesting that sometimes, you know, we, we as human beings, we may have two different people say the same thing to us. The other person, we get angry at them. The other person, we just laugh and make a joke out of it. Why? It goes back to self-regulation. It means we can control ourselves. We just, we just choose to be happy or we choose to be angry at that point just because somebody did something. Trustworthiness, being conscious of what we are doing, being able to adapt to situations and being innovative. Now, still on us, we have the motivation. What motivates you? You know, in my book, Self-leadership. I talk about motivation. There's a chapter where I focus on motivation. What motivates you to do what you are doing? What motivates you in life? What, what drives you in life? What are you committed to? Then on the right, we go to the others. On the left, it's about us internally. On the right, how we work with people. Number one, it's empathy. I talked about this earlier. Understanding others, developing others. You know, service orientation, save other people. That's empathy. You empathize with them. The next one is social skills. How you influence other people around you. How you influence other people around you. That's very important. Because you have to understand that every one of us, we are either being influenced or we influence other people in every situation of our lives. The people that we live with, those are the people who influence you. If you want to know who is influencing you in your life, you know what you do? You pull out your phone. Some of you can check your WhatsApp or your messenger or your, your phone or whatever means of communication you communicate with. The top five people that you communicate with in your life, those are the people who are influencing you. I repeat. The top five people that you communicate the most with in your life. Those are the people who influence you. The top two or three people. Those are the most influential people in your life. The top two or three people. Those are the most influential people in your life. So you have to choose who you want to communicate more with. Do you really want to be like that person? Do you really want to be successful? like that person or you want to behave like that person when it comes to social skills are you able to manage conflict 
How about your leadership? You know, leadership is about influence. You remember the definition of leadership? We said it's influence. You must be able to build bonds and relationships, collaborate with people. Form a team, work with other people as a team. This is the same thing. The components of your emotional intelligence. And by the way, that the assessment that you took, it combines all this and it gives you a score based on what you, uh, you, you put on your answers, on your responses. But it assesses your self-awareness, knowing yourself, your emotions, managing the emotions, your own emotions, your motivations, recognizing the emotions in others or empathy, which is a fundamental people skill, by the way. You must learn to empathize with people. How do you handle relationships? And it puts a score uh, in it. There is another test that you can take. That test is much, much more deeper than this. I think you answer about 50 or 60 questions. That one, it will tell you how much you score on self-awareness, on managing your emotions, <laughs> on motivation, on recognizing your emotions and others, or empathy and handling relationships. It gives you a score for each one of them. You can tell which area that you score the highest at. Whereas the one that you just took, it summarizes all of them and it gives you one score. It does not specify which area you have scored high or low. There's what you call the Johari window. It just helps you to build self-awareness. If you look on the left, we have the unknown to self. There are things that you do not know yourself. On top, we have things that are known to other people about yourself. On the right, things that are known to you. And at the bottom, we have things that are known to others. In other words, on the left, we have unknown to self. On the right, we have known to self, things that you know. At the top, we have things that are known to other people. Right at the bottom, we have things that other people do not know about you. Let's look at the top left. Things that are known to other people. People know about it, but you don't know about it yourself. Those are what you call blind spots. All of us, we have blind spots in our lives. There are things that I don't know about myself, but other people who live me, with me, they know about me. And some people, they are afraid to tell you at work. Maybe especially if you are a difficult manager. You remember what those buts? That's where the blind spot is. All those buts that you have listed, most of your managers, most of your supervisors, most of your leaders, most of your pastors, most of your team leaders, they do not know about those things that you just mentioned. It's called a blind spot. There are things that they think they know about themselves. And there are things that you who work under them, you know. And sometimes you are afraid to tell them. And they run around, they think they are good leaders, they are good supervisors. Whereas you know they are blind spots. You know things that they do not know about themselves. If you go down, things that are unknown to self and unknown to other people, it's unknowable. Only God knows. There are things that we do not know and nobody knows. Only God knows. On the right, we have things that are known to other people and they are known to ourselves. That's public knowledge. Public knowledge. Everybody knows about it. At the bottom, we have things that are private. Things that are unknown to other people that are known to us. Things that only us will know. And the question is, what is known about you to others in public? What is that everybody knows about you? Number two, what is unknown about you to others which is private? Number three, what is not known to you and not known to other people? unknowable. The last one. What is known about you by others but not known to you? That's what you call a blind spot. And that's what you need to start working on. There's a lot of things that we are not aware about ourselves. But other people are aware about it. Those blind spots, those are the ones that will destroy us. You know when you are driving and you change lanes and you don't notice that there's a car coming behind? That's what you call a blind spot. That's where most of the accidents happen. And even in our lives, most of our relationships, they are destroyed because of the blind spots. 
Most of our careers, they are destroyed because of the blind spots. There are things that we are not aware of. And other people are aware of them. Sometimes they are afraid to tell you because you threaten them. They are afraid to tell you because they know how you react. You are too emotional. Or you start to defend yourself. Instead of accepting that you are wrong, instead of accepting that you are not aware, you just defend yourself. Those blind spots are the ones that will destroy you. You need to be very, very careful with your blind spots. The blind spots, you are not aware of them. The moment you become aware of it, it's no longer a blind spot anymore. All of us, we have blind spots in life. How do you identify a low and a high emotional intelligent people? Number one, I'll quickly go through this. I don't have to explain it. Low emotional intelligent people, they are always unhappy. They are always frustrated by things. They, they always feel empty. They are always bitter. When you talk to them, you can, you, can, you can hear, you can feel bitterness. Every time they speak, they sound so angry. They always sound depressed. They are always negative. They have low self-esteem. They feel like they are failures in life. They feel like they're always dejected. Nobody cares about them. They feel a sense of loneliness. Why loneliness? Because they can't relate with people. Remember, we said high EQ. You always relate well with people. Everybody wants to be with you. Everybody wants to be around you. But if you have low EQ, you're always negative. You're always frustrated. You always feel empty. Nobody wants to be that, around that kind of a person. You always feel stressed. You have a fragile ego. You feel like the world is all about you. People with high EQ, when you are with them, they're always happy. They will share jokes. You always laugh when you are with them. They're always at peace. They are aware of the environment and themselves. They accept situations easy. When you go to them, you always find comfort in them. They have high self-esteem. They recognize other people. They, they have a sense of satisfaction in life. They are content in life. They have a sense of freedom. They always appreciate. When you do something good to them, they always appreciate. They always motivate you. They always encourage you. They have a balanced ego. They don't look down upon themselves. And they don't look so much high about themselves. They are not too proud. They always appreciate other people. Let's look at leadership. Leaders with low EQ, they sound off. Even when it won't help, they always make noise, they always scream, they always shout at you. They always call you and scream at you. They brush off people when they are bothered, when they are angry. Nobody should come closer to them. They deny that emotions impact their thinking. They're always living in denial. They are always defensive. Never talk to someone who's always defensive. Every time you talk to them, they're always defensive. Just know that they have low emotional intelligence. They're always defensive. They focus only on tasks and they ignore the person. Remember the high D that we talked about last week? Most of them, they have low EQ. They don't relate well with people. They don't care about how you feel. All they focus on is a task, 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 task. And also, people with high EQ, they only speak when doing it helps the situation. Remember the book of Proverbs that you read? People only speak when it's necessary. You don't, have, you don't always have to have the last word. You don't always have to be the the person who makes the decision. Always you keep the line of communication open. Even when you are frustrated, you don't close doors. You don't shut off. You allow people to speak into your life. You allow people to come and share their thoughts with you. And you remain calm. You don't have to scream. You don't have to jump. You don't have to make noise. You remain calm. Recognize when other people are affecting their, uh, when, when your, your, your behavior affect other people's emotions and when other people try to, uh, to affect your emotions. You must be open to feedback. Remember we talked about the blind spot? 
As long you close people out, as long you don't allow feedback, you will never ever recognize your, your blind spot in life. Allow people to tell you how they feel about you. Give people a chance to say, what is it that if you do it, they will be happy? It's very important. What can I do to make you happy? Is there anything that I need to improve, that I need to change? That's what they call be open to feedback. Allow people, give people a chance to tell you where you need to improve. That shows high level of EQ. Show other people that you care about them. You care about their situations. When you get into the room, you must be able to read, to pick up the mood of the room. What is going on here? Are people excited? Are people going through a difficult time? Is it the right time to share a joke? Or do we have to be serious this time? You must be able to read the mood of a room. That's high emotional intelligence. That's high emotional intelligence. Let's quickly go through this. Self-regulation. Controlling your emotions. High emotional intelligence. They promote an optimistic point of view. Always, always positive, 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 positive. Low emotional intelligence. Always neg they are negative about themselves. They are negative about their mama. They are negative about their friends. They are negative about their teacher. They are negative about their church. They are negative about their pastor. They are negative about Abraham Manasseh. They are negative about everything. Everything. That's a low intelligence person. High emotional intelligence people, they react to pain by processing feelings. Whereas low emotional intelligence, when they are in pain, they resort to violence. They resort to violence. Or they resort to to insults. People with low emotional intelligence, when they run out of thinking capacity, what they do when you communicate with them, they start to insult you. Insult, it's, a, it's an indication of low emotional intelligence. You don't have to insult people. You can always find a different way of saying what you want to say. You don't have to say curse words. You can use better words. You can use a good word and you still pass the same message. That's how you improve your emotional intelligence. That's how you improve your communication. High emotional intelligence people, they have high resilience. They don't give up easily. Whereas low emotional intelligence, they always carry grudge. They will always remind you of what you did last week, what you did last month, what you did last year, what you did 10 years ago, what you did 25 years ago. Some of you, you are still angry. You can't even remember what the person did to you. You just, what you know is you are angry. At some point, they made you angry. And you are still angry even today. And you keep on bringing it up every time you talk. Because you carry grudges around. You, you stay uh, with your unforgiving spirit in your life. That is a low emotional intelligence sign. Now let's go back to your scores. Your scores. The score that you got, it shows your level of relatability and understanding of other people. What it does is it brings together all these four aspects of life and it gives you a score. Like I said, you, there's, a, there's another test that you can take, but you have to pay for that one. It gives you more information about yourself. What area of life you need to improve? Do you need to improve on your self-awareness or social awareness, your social skills, how you relate with people? or self-management. Remember, number one, self-awareness. Once you are aware of yourself, the next thing is you manage yourself. Number one is self-awareness. Then the next thing, after you are aware of yourself, you are, you are able to manage yourself better. Then after that, then you can go outside and start to manage other people. Your social awareness, how you, how you relate with other people. Relationships. Your relationship is based on your self-awareness. You relate better with people if you have good self-awareness. If you have good sympathy, empathy, you, you understand other people. You understand what they are going through. You understand their situation before you become judgmental to them. Because sometimes people behave the way they behave based on their situation, but also on their emotional intelligence. 
if you are in their situation, maybe you would have behaved much, much worse than they did. That's why it's very important for you to understand. Number one, self-awareness. Number two, you're able to regulate and control how you relate with other people. Let's we'll go through your score. Take out your score. All of us, let's take out our scores and check what score you got. Anybody can share with us what, what score did you get? Let's we'll go through them. You can just, just shout and tell us what's your score. This is Dr. Donna. My score was 140. 140, okay. Anyone else? See, I mean, I got 60. 60, okay. Joyce, OG, I got 40. Joyce, 140, okay. OG, I got 100. 100. OG, my Pambe, 100. Sheila, 100. Sheila, Sheila Jones, was it 100? Yes. Okay. Shay, Shay, what is it? Shay Sanders. I got 40. I don't agree with my score, though. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question. What if 40 is a very good score? The lower, the better. It says you are pretty cold and <laughs> rarely concerned about others. That's not me. <laughs> Shay, I'm in that same boat with you. Okay, move over. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's a combination of, of, of what you call the important intelligence component, which means in one of the areas, maybe all the areas, it's either you did not respond well or you're not honest if you're responding, or maybe it could be who you are. You might need to improve. And you can take that as a positive way of learning how to improve. The question is, where, which area do you want to improve on? Self-awareness, the way you manage your emotions, empathizing with people, relationship skills. Which area in your life do you need to improve? This is Irene, what did you get? 80. 100. 100. 100. Okay, so this patience, what did you get? I got 80. 80, okay. Anyone else? I Irene, 80. Eight. Irene, what? 80. 80, okay. This is Lynette. I got, 100. I got 180. Lynette, 180. Wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Shinganga 60. Shinganga 60. Sananda 140. 140. Polina 140. Polina, what did you get? 120. 120, okay. Eduardo 100. Eduardo 100. Shilesh 120. Uh, Shilesh 140. Wow. Azri, what did you get? 120. 120, okay. Who else? Adrian? 100. 100. Uh, Billy? Chiwala? 120. 120, okay. Billy? I didn't take a test yet. Oh, no. You can't come to class without doing the assessment. You can't do that. That is not allowed because that's how you learn about yourself. And let me encourage all of us, please, when I give you an assessment, usually I'll give you about three or four days to do it. I just want to email for it. Yes, please. And, and also, before I forget, all of us, you must join the WhatsApp group because that is the only place where I put all the assessments. I cannot be able to send it to each one of you's email addresses. Join the WhatsApp group. All the assessments are on the WhatsApp group, and that's how we communicate. And that is the only way we communicate. Please, let, let's make sure we do this. Uh, it, it makes it easy for me also as, as we work together. And also for you to graduate, you must have done all the assessments. You can't skip one. Jasmine, what did you get, my friend? Jasmine? Um, brother Andrew, you just joined us today, Mlangi. What did you get, my brother? Your mic is off. Uh, please unmute. Brother Andrew, your mic is off. All right. There we uh, go. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, uh, uh, brother uh, Abram. Ne? 
Uh, I was in a prayer, then I delayed. That's why I just connected now. I'm so sorry about that. And it's my first day today. Okay. Um, Brother Gooch, what did you get? Brother Jonathan. Brother Jonathan. Are you still there? Okay, uh, Natalie, what did you get? I got 140. 140, okay, thank you. Sis Dion, my friend, what did you get? I also have 140. 140, excellent, excellent. Uh, who else? Nogutula, did you share yours? Yes, but, uh, I got 100. 100, perfect, perfect, thank you. Thank you. Nanette Mnisi, what did you get? Nanette? Yes, sir, 180. Yes, I think you told us yours. What yes. Was, I think that yours is the highest, I guess. But there's another one called Nanette Mnisi. She's in South Africa. Yours is like Lynette, right? Nanette, I think she's on mute. I don't know if you can... Can really turn her mic on. Well, thank you all for sharing your, your scores. But like I said, that score is a combination of your self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and social skills. Now, let's see what that score means. Let's go back to our, to our scores. All of us, let's look at our scores. The top score, it's too hard. <laughs> The top score is 200. Lynette, I think you are the one who got the highest score. It means you are good socially. You are good emotionally. You are able to control your emotions. You are good in relating with people. If you got between 100 and 200, you are high. Your emotional, your emotional quotient is high, which is a good thing also. If you got anything between 90 and 110, it's normal. If you got below 90, you need to improve. You need to improve on how you control your emotions. You need to improve on how you relate with people. You need to improve on how you understand yourself, self-awareness. You need some, some work to do. And there are some few tools that I'll quickly go through that will help you improve. You don't have to feel discouraged. Don't feel down. Just know that this helps you to understand yourself better. And it means you, have, you, can, you can improve, you can do better. Remember what I said earlier? I said something which is very profound. You can't change your IQ, your intellect quotient. You can't change it. But you can change and improve your EQ, your emotional intelligence, emotional quotient. You can change it. You can move from 90 to 100. You can move from 100 to 200. You can move from 200, I mean, from 100 to 200. You can improve. Don't get discouraged. And there are things that I'll show you what you can do in order to improve. Let's we'll go through the signs that you have high emotional intelligence. Number one, like I said, IQ is not a source of success, but EQ. Don't be threatened if you don't understand math or your understanding of science is low. That there are people who have high IQ, but they can't relate with people. We said it from the beginning. Oh, he's a good financial accountant. Oh, he's a good pastor. He's a great director. But those but, it shows the low EQ. It shows that they are failing when it comes to rating with people. They are good. They have high IQ, but they have low EQ. You have a robust emotional vocabulary. Even when you go through difficult and challenging situations, you can still talk and relate with people and speak nice words to people. You're concerned about people's well-being. That's empathy. When you have high emotional intelligence, you empathize with people. You embrace change. When things change, you accept it and move on. You know your strength and your weakness. You are a good judge of character. You don't misjudge people. You are very, very difficult to offend. You don't easily, you know, get easily offended. You know how to, to say no yourself and to other people. 
You let go of people's mistakes. You are so quick to forgive. You give and you expect nothing in return. You don't hold grudges. Hmm. Most people have a challenge with, with this one. You don't hold grudges if you want to increase your emotional intelligence. You neutralize toxic people. I said that, I said this many times. Get rid of toxic people in your life because people influence you. You must sit down and check what kind of friends do you want in your life. Identify those people and, and, and try to relate, come closer to those kind of people. Follow the people that you want to become, in short. People that you admire. And run away from people that you want to avoid. You don't seek perfection. Don't hit yourself so hard. Sometimes you will fail. But don't give up. Don't give up. Appreciate what you have. Appreciate what you have. I said disconnect from negativity. I don't know how much I should emphasize this. Surround yourself with positive people. Surround yourself with people of influence. You have to make a decision. Relationships are not accidental. You relate with people that you want to relate with. It's not by accident. It's not by chance. You choose who you want to relate with. You influence without authority. There's a book that I wrote. It's called Leading from the Second Chair. How to have influence, how to lead, even without a position. You may not have a position in your organization, but you still have influence. You still have influence. Be a great team player. You stop negative self-talk. Don't talk negative about yourself. You won't let anyone limit your joy. Don't allow anybody to control you. When you allow somebody to control you, you are giving them the keys. You are giving them the control. The pin, the password to your, to your life. Don't allow another body to control whether you should be happy or not happy today. Just because somebody did something. Somebody said something. You must think about your feelings. Don't allow them to control you. Remember, no matter what you go through, even this shall pass. All situations are temporary. There is this king who had a challenge emotionally. And he called all his people and the smart people in his kingdom, his advisors. And he said, I have a problem. When I'm so happy, I get so much excited and I can't control myself. And I find myself doing things or saying things out of excitement that I cannot fulfill. And also when I'm upset, when I'm angry, I go all the way to the extreme. I don't know how to control it. And some of you are in that situation right now. When you are angry, you break stuff. When you are angry, you break relationships. When you are angry, everybody knows about it that you are angry. You are upset. Things do not go your way. Your way. And everybody said, I don't know how to advise the king. We don't know how to say to you. We don't know how to advise, how to control it. And this brilliant, wise, smart guy, he came to the king's presence and he said, King, what I want you to remember is, every time you are excited, every time you are happy, just know, even this shall pass. When you go through challenging and difficult situations in your life, when you go through tough times in your life, when life does not go as you expected, when your children do not behave as you expected, when your boss does not treat you as he should and you get upset, just remember, even this shall pass. Brothers and sisters, all situations are temporary. Even your current situation, it's temporal. It's temporal.
even this shall pass. And that will help you control your emotions. Most of us will find it so difficult to control our emotions because we think, this is very important, we think that the situation that we are going through is the end of the world. You, you can't see beyond today. You don't think there is still tomorrow. You don't think you will need them tomorrow. You don't think you will need someone tomorrow. You think that's the end of the world. No, it's not the end of the world. Even your current situation shall pass. It's like going through a tunnel. That darkness, it's temporary. Very, very temporary. It will pass. And you'll reach the other side of the tunnel. The sun will shine again. It's during the day here in the U.S. In South Africa, it's almost dark out there. No matter how dark it is, even at 12 midnight, you may wake up and find that it's dark. But there is something deep down in you that you know. Around 6 o'clock in the morning, the sun will shine again. And let me say this to you in your life. No matter what you're going through right now, no matter how dark your situation is, remember, in the morning, the sun will shine again. You don't have to give up. It is not the end of the world. You don't have to go off on people, scream and shout and all. No, it's just a temporary situation. It will pass. It will pass. It's very, very temporary. And it's my prayer that as we finish this last part of the class, there are some few things that I want to say before we close. But just remember that your situation is temporary. Just like that king Remember, even this shall pass. You will heal again. You will be strong again. You will be successful again. You will move on again. Let's quickly go through some few things that we can do to increase your emotional intelligence. Number one, those with low or below average EQ scores can increase their emotional intelligence. I said this many times. If you have anything less than 120 or less than 100, you can increase that score. Number one, reduce negative emotions. I don't know how many times I should say this. Avoid negative people in your life. People have a lot of influence in your life. There's a reason why you don't allow your kids to play with those kids who cannot, who can, who cannot behave, who always misbehave, because you know they influence your kids. They'll influence your kids. And let me say this, peer pressure does not only apply to kids, it applies to us as adults also. It matters who you communicate with. It matters who your friends are. Your friends will influence how much you earn in life. <laughs> I wish we understand this. Your friends will also influence how much you earn in life. Studies show, studies show, that you and your friends, all of you, on average, we earn almost the same salary. Yes. You and your friends, in, 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 in general, most of you, you will earn the same salary. Let me put it this way. Most of you, if you, are a, if you are a nurse, most of your friends will be nurses. And on average, you'll earn the same salary. If you are a, a, a teacher, most of your friends will be teachers. And on average, you, learn the same, you earn the same salary. If you are a manager, most of your friends will be managers. On average, you, same, you earn the same salary. And you feel comfortable with that. Because if you ask your friends and they tell what they are earning, you find that, oh, we're almost the same. And you feel comfortable with that. You can't relate with somebody who earns more than you because you feel uncomfortable. If you want to be, I always said this. If you have four friends, if you have four friends who are broke, 
in the next few months, the next few years, you'll be the fifth one. If you hang around with three millionaires, you'll become the fourth one soon. How does this work? It's because when we are with your friends, you always talk, you always communicate. When you are with broke friends, guess what you talk about? You talk about negative stuff, how broke you are, how you have no money, and how things are so difficult, how everything is expensive. That is the talk that you have, and you feel comfortable with that. If you stay with millionaires, three millionaires, four millionaires, guess what? You talk about investments. You talk about buying property. You talk about uh, the economy. You talk about how to make more money. That's a kind of language that you talk. That's a kind of topics that you always discuss. And that influences you to move towards that direction. If you stay with people who always want to read and study and, and move to the next level in their education, in their career, they influence you, they challenge you, and you always want to become more and more like them. And that is the reason why we say you earn, on average, you earn at least 5% above or 5% below your three or four average friends. Go ahead and check your friends. All your friends, you find that you all earn the same amount of salary. That's how it works. So if you stay with negative people, guess what? Slightly, slowly, but surely, you become more and more of a negative person. And you are busy lowering your EQ. Brothers and sisters, let's associate with the people who will help us to grow. Stay cool and manage your stress. Examine how you react to stressful situations. Be aware of your of your reactions to stressful situations. Observe how you react to people. Learn to empathize with people. Not sympathize, empathize with people. Do a self-evaluation. Examine how you react to, 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 to situations and how your life, your reaction, your talk, how it affects other people. Take responsibility for your, for your action. Stop blaming other people. Stop blaming your, your, your cousin. Stop blaming your, your manager. Stop blaming your colleague. Stop blaming your, uh, your phone. Stop blaming your dog. Stop blaming your cat. You blame everybody around you. You don't see that it's you. It's you. Be assertive and express difficult emotions when necessary. Stay proactive. Do not be reactive in the face of a difficult person. Respond instead of reacting to conflict. There is a book that I wrote. It's called Followership. Followership. In that book, I talk about things that as leaders we need to understand about our followers. As a leader, there are things that you do not understand. You do not understand about people who are following you. As a team leader, there are things that you do not understand about the people that you are leading. And that book, it reveals those stuff. One of the chapters, I talk about the difference between reacting and responding. Reacting and responding. Utilize active, not selective listening. You must listen, learn to listen. Bounce back from adversity. Be self-motivated. Let me say this before I close. Some of you already know. Some of you do not know. As I'm speaking to you right now, what I'm talking about, it is not something that I do not go through. I also go through the same challenges. I have been working for a company called Cal Optima here in Orange. On, I've been working with them for about 17 years. On Monday, I got a notice that they are reorganizing the organization. Our whole department has been dissolved. What it means is I no longer have a job. As from April. I'm just wondering if it was you and you got a notice that you no longer have a job, how would you react? How would you behave? Everybody will see you crying and shouting and screaming and being sympathetic, everybody have, no, no, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. It's not the end of the world. Life goes on. Life does not stop because I, I no longer have a job. 
I'm not the only one. There's a big department of about 20 people or so. Our department has been dissolved. We no longer have jobs. What do you do? Do you cry? Do you scream? We must be resilient with life. Life has its ups and downs. I'm not talking to you about something that I do not go through. I also go through challenges like anybody else. But we have to learn how to deal with situations like, how do you deal with adversity? How do you deal with difficult situations like that? You must learn to bounce back from adversity. You must be self-motivated. It's very important for us to understand that. Practice continuous improvement and self have self-awareness. Continuous improvement, you must learn. You must always grow in life. This is very important. We keep on emphasizing your network, the people that you relate with, determines your emotional network. Associate with positive, motivating, and encouraging people. Those are the kind of people that you need to always relate with. Everything rises and falls with relationships. Brothers and sisters, we have to learn to relate with people. We have to learn to relate with people better. And the last thing before we close, if you need to increase your emotional intelligence, ask God to grant you wisdom to apply what you have learned today. James chapter 1 verse 5 says, but if any of you lack wisdom, maybe emotional intelligence, you should pray to God who will give it to you because God gives generously and graciously to all. It's my prayer that we'll ask God to give us the wisdom that we need. We're able to, to relate with people, to understand people, empathize with people, support people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this day. We thank you for speaking into our hearts, into our lives. Just to understand our emotions, to understand that we can control our emotions no matter what you go through in life. Because life has its ups and downs. Life has its challenges. But help us, Father, to relate well with people and be able to relate with people, relate with situations no matter what you go through. Relate with situations much, much better in our lives. I pray for every leader who is here, that God will help them, Father, to grow their leadership skills and their emotional intelligence, how they relate with people, how they relate with situations, and how they relate with themselves. We pray for your wisdom. We pray for your guidance. We pray that, Lord, you will lead us and guide us throughout in everything that we do in our lives. We give you all the glory and all the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, um, Tomorrow I'll be in Chicago, Illinois. I'll be doing the same thing. So from flying out in the morning, and we trust that God will be with us throughout the weekend. I'll be with them Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and we'll come back. And I believe that it will be a great, great time of learning and growing. Then I'll meet with you again next week, Thursday, and we'll continue with our next topic. And thank you so much for being part of our class. When you leave, just say your name and let us know that you are out. I'll be here for the next 10 minutes or so. If you have any question or anything, any comment that you want to say, a word of encouragement, whatever you want to say, please stay around and share your thoughts and let us know uh, if there's anything we can do to, to help you, to support you. I'll be here for the next 10 minutes or so. Thank you so much and God bless you. Have a good night and have a great day if you're in the US. Thank you. Elder. Hello, 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 uh, Mr. Warren. Um, next Thursday, uh -huh. um, our brother, Pancho, will have the homegoing service of his mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joyce and I are going to be attending that. Okay. And, no and, yeah. and, and, and Joyce, this will, unfortunately, that would be her second time having missed the class. Is there something we can do about that? Yeah, I'll talk to her privately and we'll see what we can do. And I understand the situation. I mean, she can't miss the funeral of, uh, I mean, he's our friend, actually. I don't know if time allows, maybe I should be there also. Yeah, but I, we'll I, see what we can do. 
I, and I will, I will send you the information. Uh, uh, I will text the information to you relative to that service. Please, please forward it to me. I will see what we can do. You we got need, it, sir. We need to support our brother. He has been a great, great friend, and we can't leave him alone, especially at this time. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Pastor Eduardo, all the way from the Philippines. How are you doing, my brother? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, I would like, just uh, like to ask, uh, because I already take this uh, uh, topics before Okay. Uh, in uh, sessions. Uh, my question is, uh, it's okay I have to continue this one or on the next level? No, it's okay. You can continue with this. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Because okay. I learned so much. I mean, I, I already <laughs> uh, get the topic, but okay. I really appreciate it. It's even so that your testimony is really encouraged me. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad that okay. it encourages you and it helps you even when you go through challenging and difficult situations. We don't have yeah. to throw in the towel. Life still goes on. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's, I'm sorry that the, my wife cannot uh, do it because it, she's teaching. <laughs> uh, because it's already, I you know, uh, uh, one o'clock and until two okay. thirty a.m. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 late for you guys over there. And thank you so much yeah, but, uh, for your sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sestiani. You wanted to say something? Hi. Hey, oh. Yes. Um. Okay. So, I took the test on Sunday. Okay. And um, to be honest, when I saw my score, I was disappointed because I thought I. I'm handling this, then I realized that no, I'm not actually. I'm not doing okay. I've done a personal development course before, mm -hmm. like two years ago. But I realized that it did not um uh, the what you are oh I think we lo we're losing you. We are losing you, my sister. Dr. Manasse. Hello, Miss Sibale. How are you and how's I'm family? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm I'm great. These these lessons are so uplifting, and very informative. Mm. Now I wanted to find out. I missed the first class, so I don't know. Maybe you have you would have spoken in that class. I wanted to ask if the we we you will be sending us the recordings because I couldn't write the scriptures. I wanted to follow through so that I get the scriptures and then I go through the scriptures mm -hmm. um, mm. at my own time. I think, I thought I sent you the link. Okay, I'll go ahead and I'll send you the link to our last week's okay. meeting. It's okay, no problem. Okay, okay. Yeah, and then for this, for, this, for this lesson, how do I get the scriptures that you are sharing on your, on your PowerPoint? The scriptures are in the book, Self-Leadership. How to ah. live yourself before leaving other people. Awesome. Okay. All right. And then one of our pastors at church mm -hmm. has been failing to, he has been failing to pay. I don't know what problem he has. So he wanted an, uh, an alternative of paying. So this, uh, this evening when we had midweek service, he was asking that he, he has found the uh, he has the wife will pay on his behalf. So now he was trying to find out, can he be allowed to join? Can he take the assessment, the two past assessments, and then he joins? He's been missing this, this course for the past two years. Um, let him communicate with me outside this meeting because there's a lot that you will need to do in the, for the past two weeks. I mean, if you've already missed yes. two, there's a lot yes. to catch up with. Uh, yeah, let, let's communicate outside this, then we'll see what you can do. Okay, I'll give him your number and then he will he will call you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, Reverend Eddie wants to say hi. Hello, my pastor. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you in Zambia? It's been great. I've been uh, following. Ah, Amen. it's one, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's yeah. us. I don't know. I think we need to come and uh, yeah. and uh, and do again another session here. Uh, this is awesome. Yeah, I was talking to my wife about it and see if we'll see uh, if there's a possibility of coming to Zambia before the end of this year. We'll see what we can do. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll see. Let me say that. We'll see if we can. Uh, yeah, we can come and but, spend some time with you. Thank you to Livingstone. 
You want us to go to Livingston? Yes, we, we oh. need to take you after the session. We need to take you to the Victoria Falls. I would love to do that. Definitely. I would love mm -hmm. to come. Then we'll go to Livingston and spend some time. Yeah, definitely. Maybe we can spend the weekend, uh, you know, at your place with your leaders. Then yeah. after that, then we we'll go to Livingston. Oh, that would be great. It would be an honor. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Uh, we'll, we'll communicate. Oh, man. Amen. Okay, thank you. And have a good morning. I think it's morning there. Yes, it's afternoon. still morning. <laughs> Okay, do have a good morning. Thank you. Thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Brother Andrew, you wanted to say something? Uh, I wanted to say something. Thanks, Dr. Manas. I wanted okay. to say something, man, that um, I only managed to register today ne? Mm. with the help of Pastor Titi. Okay. Um, yes. So uh, this is my first session and uh, I was so um, embarrassed because I also joined the meeting so late. So when people were talking about their scores, that was the moment that I was telling myself that tonight I'll get into that test and write it so. But unfortunately, people were then presenting their score sheets. So, um, but I will do it. I'll do it. Then um, I'll be able to present it to you. What we'll do is before the class, I'll give you the assessment for the following class and i give you three four days to do it then okay. you do it and you submit to me at least a day or two days before the class so i can before go the to your score okay okay so by the time we come to class you'll have done it at least two days before and i'm aware okay. and i know most of the scores already and i know what to okay. focus on all right <clears throat> No, no, thanks so much. And, and and another part that I also wanted to ask, uh, when I was going through the information after my registration, there was this assignment that uh, it was said that I need to submit it at least not later than Friday tomorrow. And if I fail to submit tomorrow, then I'll be deemed not interested anymore. In the course. <laughs> so, so I was just panicking and being under pressure. Uh, of doing that, but uh, I will try my level best that I sleep a bit late, maybe, uh, for this one. You know how long it takes? I don't know. How long? Three minutes. Oh, okay. No, it's fine. I'll finish it. Because there was that, just, just that information that I need to go through first before I get into the, 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 the assignment. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah, there's not much that you need to read before. Sometimes I prefer you to go the raw as it is, you know, so that you should be honest, then you start to learn yeah. about it later. And so just go ahead and do all the assessments and let's communicate privately and we'll see what we can do to help you. All right, thanks, Dr. Manas. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Brother Billy, I see your hand is up. Hey, good morning. Uh, question, what is the name? I'm not very familiar with WhatsApp. Um, oh, okay, okay. What's the name of the group? Uh, I will send you the link. Do you have what? Did you download WhatsApp? Yes, I just downloaded it. When you did your registration, did you get the uh, the 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 email that was replying to your registration? Um, because I, right at the bottom, it has a link to the WhatsApp group. If you click on that link, it will take you to joining the group. But what I will do is send me your your phone number, then I will uh, I will send you the link to the WhatsApp group. Okay. Yeah, because that's where we communicate. So everybody should be in the WhatsApp group. Copy. Thank you Perfect. so much. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, Sister Diane, are you still there? Castillo? Sister Diane Castillo, are you still there? No. Okay. Manslesho, are you still there? Good evening. Good morning, Dr. Manasse. Thank you so much. I must say I'm attending this class for the second time, mm. and it definitely changed my leadership skill, skills, and I'm able to empower others with all the resources that you are giving us. Thank mm. you so much, and we like your new hairstyle. <laughs> 
Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I, I never saw that one coming. <laughs>